Hey guys, thanks for tuning in to another video on ForgottenWeapons.com. I'm Ian McCollum, and I am here today at the gracious invitation of the South Iceland Shooting Association, or Southern Iceland Shooting Association, taking a look at a couple of cool guns. In particular, we have one with really no direct connection to Iceland. This is a ZB30 light machine gun. Uh, a gun that's actually really quite scarce in the United States, and fairly scarce around the world as well. This is the, the development of the original Czech ZB26. So the, the basic lineage of this gun begins back in 1923, when Václav Holek, uh, one of the premier arms designers of Czechoslovakia, designs what will become eventually the Czech Army's new light machine gun. It's uh, box magazine fed, detachable barrel, quick change barrel, uh, generally considered to be the best light machine gun uh, of World War II. Of course, this is the gun that would eventually develop into the Bren gun. Hence, I mean, the Bren is also considered one of the best light machine guns of the war. It's essentially the same, mechanically, the same gun as the ZB family. Anyway, um, the recognizable predecessor to this gun is developed in 1924. It's tested by the Czech military in 1925. November of 1925 they decide to formally adopt it. They place an order for 4,000 of them, and uh, production and deliveries begin in 1926, hence the Czech uh, designation ZB model 26. Now at this point uh, the Brno factory manufacturing the guns is they're certainly interested in making and selling more of them, and they would actually sell substantially more of these guns on the international export market than they did to the Czech military. So they sold these things all over the world, Africa, Asia, Europe, South America. Uh, the Chinese warlords bought a lot of ZB-26s. And one of the countries that was interested was Romania. Now, after the ZB-26 was developed and put into service, Brno continued to develop the design. And one of the sort of wrenches that was thrown into their planning was the German adoption of uh, heavy ball ammunition. So the German military went and standardized on a 198 grain bullet for their 8mm Mauser. This came up from 154 grain. And the ZB-26 mechanism had really been developed around the light ball ammunition, and it didn't react very well to heavy ball. This isn't the sort of thing that you would necessarily see in you know, a collector with one range session using heavy ammunition, but in terms of a logistical, uh, you know, military-wide use of the guns, there was battering and damage, and it, the, the heavy ball reduced the lifespan of the guns. There was more, uh, more gas pressure coming back from it. And the gun really needed to be tweaked and, and altered a bit to handle this heavy ball ammunition. And the heavy ball was becoming a standard not just for Germany, but for everybody else using 8mm Mauser. They really followed the German military development trend. This included Romania. So Brno actually redesigned a couple different elements of the gun. They improved the locking system, uh, which we'll take a look at in a moment when we disassemble this. And of particular importance, they changed up the gas port and the gas tube and the gas piston, and they added an adjustable gas port to the guns, which the ZB26 had not uh, featured. So these changes were designated the, the ZB27 in, uh, by Brno, and this was an experimental pattern. It never went into production under that designation, but both the 26 and the ZB27 were tested by the Romanian military in 1929. They liked the Model 27 with its improvements. There are a couple other improvements that we'll also take a look at when we disassemble this. They liked that improved version, and they signed a contract in 1930 to purchase it from Brno. Now, there would be some issues with payment, like they didn't actually pay for it, and this delayed deliveries for several years, but eventually uh, guns were delivered made in Brno, and there was also a license granted for the Romanians to manufacture what was designated the ZB-30 at Kugir, uh, the arsenal in Romania. So what we have here is uh, one of the Brno manufactured guns, and we also have a Kugir example to show you. So let's take a look at what the mechanical changes were to the ZB-30. All right, we have both examples here. They are, we'll go through the differences, but first let's just take a look at the markings. Both are marked with the manufacturer on the left side of the receiver. So we have big Kugir mark on the Romanian-made one, and a Brno marking 
on the check. And then both have the same marking on the top of the receiver, that is the crest and the crown of King Carol II, who ruled Romania from 1930 until 1940. And then they both have the model designation on the back of the receiver here, uh, ZB, the manufacturer, uh, MD, model, 1930. The serial numbers are a bit interesting here. The Romanian, the Cougar made gun, has a serial number 30,000 and change with a C prefix, which I'm pretty sure indicates Cougar, although I can't prove it. And I'm not sure exactly where the serial number range started or what it uh, entails, because they only made, well they didn't make 30,000 of these, they made about 10,000 of them at Cougar. Maybe they picked up at some point where Brno serial numbers left off, I'm just not sure. The Brno gun has a serial number of just under 10,000 with a BR suffix, which again I'm pretty sure indicates manufacture at Brno. Uh, but again I don't have any actual documented proof of that. Now looking at some of the features, starting at the back, what we'll see is that Brno was trying to expand the utility of the ZB26 and make it something that was uh, more of a capable of more diverse roles. So they wanted to turn it into something that could be used as a general purpose machine gun. And back here we see that in this rear socket for a rear monopod. There are some light machine guns out there that have just a plain rear monopod to allow you to have more stable fire at long range, and that was something you could do with this, but they also specifically made a basically a field of fire kit, where you had a rear monopod that sat down onto a curved track that allowed you to set limiters on it and act sort of like a uh, field of fire limitations on a GPMG tripod. So that was a, a new feature to the ZB30. Of course it does have a shoulder rest on the back of the butt plate. This remains a magazine fed design. Uh, the magazine is central on the top, uses a 20 round magazine, and the ZB, this is the exact same magazine that the ZB26 used. It's an excellent magazine design. Uh, they are reliable, well liked, uh, easy to use. You can push the magazine release with the palm of the hand, magazine tips out. Uh, your assistant gunner would be primarily responsible for reloading duty on this. There is a magazine cover to seal that up when not in use. It is a downward ejecting gun and there is a cover plate, a sliding cover plate down here to close up the ejection port also when not in use. The selector is three positions. You have one for semi-auto, zero here for safe, and 20 for full. Note also the rubber ejection buffer uh, on the front of the trigger guard behind the ejection port. That's really cool. This is a phenomenally nice condition example of one of these guns. This is the sort of thing that normally is in pretty poor condition and this one's just like brand new. A couple other developments of the ZB30. We have a socket here for an anti-aircraft sight. Again that was intended as part of the Part of the idea of making this a multi-role gun is give it a better anti-aircraft capability with improved sights. So the socket for that is there. They also, one of the few mechanical changes that was made between this and the uh, ZB26, first off it was deemed a little bit too easy to pop the barrel latch on the ZB26, and so they encased the, the release button in a shroud here. So you have to reach in presumably with a cartridge, to pop that button. This one is in really new condition and fairly stiff. Alright, there we go. Uh, this is a very stiff barrel latch, but you have to reach in there to push the release button to open the barrel latch to remove the barrel. And then there was a rather uh, embarrassing incident during the testing, uh, the Romanian testing, of what was at the time the experimental or the developmental ZB27, where a soldier left the barrel latch unlocked, fired the gun, and the barrel proceeded to fly downrange a little bit. Uh, not actually directly dangerous, but not a good thing and fairly embarrassing to the, the Brno staff. So what they did was develop a, a lock on here that prevents the gun from firing if the barrel latch isn't locked in place. And we can actually see it right there, it's that long rectangular lug. As you can see it's moving downward as I close the barrel latch. And when the barrel latch is all the way closed 
that retracts completely out of the way. Well, when it's not retracted, if the barrel latch is open, when I go to cycle the bolt, the op rod right here actually hits that lug and won't go any farther back. And what that means is the bolt will only come this far back. That's not far enough to pick up a cartridge, and it's not far enough to catch on the sear. This is an open bolt gun, and so if you can't lock it open on the sear, you can't actually fire it. And if the barrel release lever is open, you can't lock it open. So this sort of indirectly acts as a safety to prevent the gun from firing if the barrel is not solidly locked in place. That's so a, a simple and clever way to do that. Minor change here, they actually added a locking lever to the bipod. So that will lock together while the bipod is snug into. I can do this with one hand on camera. There we go. The bipod feet lock into this little ridge on the receiver. That holds everything nice and tight so it doesn't rattle and it's as small as possible. The ZB26, and interestingly the Bren that came after this design, don't have that sort of little locking clasp. Then, most importantly, the front end of the gas system was redesigned to have an adjustable gas uh, regulator. So this uh, wheel rotates and gives you multiple positions with different amounts of gas going into the system. It's locked in place by this little bar, which we'll see when we take this apart. But this is a system that wasn't in place on the earlier ZB26s, and it allowed the gun to be adaptable to different levels, uh, different power of ammunition, most importantly the heavy ball versus the light ball. There are a couple rather subtle differences between the Romanian and the Czech made examples here. There are just a couple rather subtle differences between the Romanian and the Czech made examples of the guns. So this one on the bottom is the Romanian, this is the Czech. You can see the Czech has open uh, front sight protectors, the Romanian has a fully enclosed hood, and then the design of the gas block and the flash hider and the gas regulator are just slightly subtly different. They function the same way, they're just the parts aren't exactly the same. Disassembly of the ZBs are, is really easy. There's a pin at the back here, and this one is a, oh, there we go, this is a pretty tight gun. Uh, pull that pin out and you can simply pivot the lower down. Now if you want to take the lower off entirely, there's a second pin here that allows you to do that. For our sake today we're just going to leave the lower attached, pivot it down, and then grab the charging handle here. and pull the bolt carrier, bolt, and operating rod out the back. Of course we can then also remove the barrel by pushing the lever on the inside, rotating this up, and popping the barrel forward and out. With the barrel removed from the gas tube, we can now pull this lever all the way down, which allows us to rotate the gas regulator here. There we go, so that can be adjusted, and then you screw the flash hider back on, line it up with one of those. There we go, and this lever holds the two in place, prevents them from rotating, uh, and the gas tube prevents this lever from coming back. So it's a nice interlocking system. This isn't the sort of thing that you're intended to be changing on the fly. This isn't meant to adjust for, oh the gun got a little bit dirty and so I'll click the gas up until I you know, clean it tonight. This is the sort of thing that's intended to set the gun for a specific type or lot of ammunition, and then you just kind of leave that alone. Now the one sort of internal change that was made between the ZB26 and the ZB30 is basically in this locking cam. So in the ZB26 you have cams, two cams like this that are on the outside of the bolt carrier, and you have cutouts for them back here in the bolt carrier. What they did with the 27, the experimental or developmental gun, and then adopted and put into production in the ZB30, is change that to a single center cam here. So this is simpler, it's more efficient, uh, it's just a better design overall.
and it does the same job. It's going to pull the bolt down like so. So this is in battery, ready to fire, and when the bolt cycles, the bolt carrier is actually going to go back because it's got this gas piston directly connected to it. As this pushes back, the bolt's going to stay in place until you get to right there, and that's where this hook on the inside is going to grab this angled surface at the back of the bolt, pull it down out of battery. Once it's down like that, then the whole thing can cycle backwards. This fires from an open bolt, uh, and so when the bolt carrier is fully forward, there is a spring-loaded firing pin. You can see the firing pin protrudes there. What's actually happening, just like the ZB26, is you have a firing pin right there, and it is hitting on the front of this, uh, what is doubling as a cam lug. And so when this hits the firing pin, that's what actually fires it. That's a nice system to not require, for example, any sort of disconnector or interrupter, because there's no way that it can fire before it's in battery, because the, the same feature controls it going into battery and actually impacting on the firing pin. And there is your basic field stripped ZB30 light machine gun. These were very well liked, they were very reliable in the field, uh, they were used extensively by uh, elements of the German military whenever possible to get them. Uh, really, they were, they were well liked by everybody who had them. And perhaps there's no better indication of that than the fact that the British essentially adopted the ZB uh, modified to use their 303 British cartridge, despite it being utterly not made in the UK. Uh, that's something that had been a bit foreign to the British. They liked uh, buying stuff that they had designed themselves, and the ZB was such a good gun that so completely outclassed everything else around it that even the British were happy to adopt it and make it their own. As I said, production delivery was delayed until about 1933, at which point deliveries from Brno did commence. There were a total of 17,131, according to the numbers that I have available, of the Brno manufactured ZB30s delivered to Romania. In addition, there were approximately 10,000 of them made at Cougar. And the guns are, well, as you saw, not quite identical, but pretty darn close to identical. Uh, they both remain very scarce today. Of course, they were heavily used during World War II not a lot of them survived, and they would be replaced after the war by proper, well, um, Romania of course joined into the, the Warsaw Pact arms system, and so 8mm Mauser was no longer a standard caliber uh, a little ways after the war, and the guns were replaced. So at any rate, um, very rare to find especially the Romanian manufactured version. Very cool to get a chance to take a look at these. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching.